We're not trying to say here that we have what you would want to refer to in the teachings of uh, peace building as parental failure and then spiritual failure where this same very important message you just mentioned here is not being transferred from the older generation to this generation. People like me have enjoyed both the analog and the digital generation. Uh, we had albums, cartridges, cassettes. Today now, we don't only have CDs, we have flash. Very soon, the music and the rest will just be passing in the air, we'll be catching it. You know, you're reducing and reducing. So that evolution, that is how we're getting disconnected with the reality why the disconnect is making us not being tolerant of each other more every day. When we talk about the uh, parental failure, I give you an example. Now, I have kids in rentier model, you know, in state locals, and then my son came back from the cultural day, and uh, I opened the WhatsApp group, and I was showing him their pictures, how they were dancing and everything. Then he said to me, oh, did you see Emeka I was telling you, the one wearing cherbi, cherbi on his neck, but his own has plus. <laughs> you know, since from that day, I knew I was failing as a parent, I did not tell him how important it is for his father that attended missionary schools, and he is, at the age of six, does not know the rosary, does not know what a rosary looks like, is a failure on my own part. Most parents have failed. That is why you have this level of intolerance today in the society. Spiritually, most clerics and clergies have failed they didn't tell you we were all coming from Adam. They lied to you that today uh, fast and pray. Whatever it is you're looking for, you'll get it. You'll pass your exams, you'll this. They didn't tell you the true history. There is what you now have, you know, uh, as quest for supremacy too, within this religious history, you know, within the spiritual history, quest for supremacy here in culture. i give you an example. Initially, we used to have, when we were growing up, all we knew were Catholics, you know? Today, Seventh-day Adventists, Deeper Life, you know? Uh, which is the other one? Jehovah Witness. Now, Redeem wants to carry all the members. <laughs> they will say, come to my church. They're not calling you to Christ. No, come to my church. Quest for supremacy. Quest for numbers. Same thing. We hear of Jibwis as Muslims here. Yeah? I'm a Muslim. You hear of Jibwis. Uh, is our little bidi away come out to sin now. You hear of Shia today and the rest. I'm older than all those organizations. And then they tell you, if you don't do it like them, you are not a true Muslim. Now, intolerance here, what gives you the right? What makes you think I have to come to your church? What is wrong with my own church? Near my office of Mutala Muhammad Way, you have three places of worship in one business location. When you come as a Muslim and you meet whoever is leading as the Imam standing like this, you say, this one, yeah, these are not my people. You wait until that congregational prayer is over before you come and start another one because you belong to different sects. So before, if we had intra-religious differences, now we have intra even inside the same religion. 
So you have in the afternoon and early evenings, Azhar and La Asar, you have three, two, three different times of prayers. Just because this sect is not my sect. It's so bad today, my son cannot be a best man to his cousin because the church will say he must come from this church first. You get him married, your best man from come, must come from this church. If not from this church, they must be Muslims, they must be Christians. I was best man to more than eight of my friends, and fantastic. One of them is here, same here, Michael Magadji. You know, so we have to be able to contain this quest for supremacy. We have to be able to control this feeling of right over the other person. What are our choices? What are our choices? Does anybody, can anybody think of any choice? What are our choices? Let me tell you, you have no choice. Did you hear me? You have no choice. There will never be a time in your life, because we are our own, we don't first chop half, more than half. There will never be a time in your life that you will find only Christians or only Muslims in this university. Not possible. There will never be a time that you will wake up and ply the KK or the boss and find out that there are only Christians or Muslims inside. Impossible. Don't waste your time. There will always, there will always, there will always be Muslims and Christians in Nigeria. So if you, if you are thinking, if you are not tolerant of each other, just move to mass or Venus and go and live. <laughs> the way forward today, I think, is we will go back and start looking at how to change your syllabus right from scratch. Let there be peace education. Let us. We're just turning out people who do not even appreciate. You people have missed, honestly. You've missed. When we were growing up, you've missed. You only know one thing. We will know all. Yeah. I've attended mass. It's just what the uh, boy, what is it? Uh, communion, I won't take. I know everything. See me here. For those who know me, it's always pick up, you see me. I run, a, I run a continental pageant. My brethren, the Muslims, have accepted me like that. I'm, that's why I'm telling you I'm a symbol of tolerance. It is my right. It is, I will go to my grave, only me. You learn to do things that are right. That is all. We want to start insisting now that the way forward for us to build this tolerance is to make sure that we inculcate peace education in our schools, right from nursery school up to you people. Most importantly, the clerics and the clergy. If they know obtain that peace education, you can preach. All of them, I don't cause the war, war, war with their experience now. They have toyed with our thinking. And then they always tell you, they are supposed to tell you what is good. Then you allow the society to tell you what is right and what is wrong. Because you cannot, as a 24-year-old, meet me in a bank on a Tuesday morning, 10 a.m., and want to share a flyer with me to come to your church. You're wasting your life. <laughs> Whoever sent you on that mission was very unfair to you. 
I was employing 14 people at the age of 24. I was a nightclub owner at 24. 24. And I see a 24 year old today going about sharing flyer. We have, wait, I'm coming. Oh, no, let's, it's almost my time. I'll soon leave. Chair, you heard they said, I am the convener movement for the rights of Almajiri child. When I finish with you sharing the flyer, I'm coming to the Almajiri. Wait. <laughs> so we're not looking at things. The Almajiri child, okay, let's leave the flyer person. I have very, very strong <laughs> The Almajiri child, is the clear manifestation of breeding somebody who is completely disillusioned, completely intolerant of anything good. A child that does not know any hug, does not know a toothpaste, does not have a towel, does not know, does not know warm water, does not know toilet, does not know bathroom. <laughs> what kind of human being are you breeding? We will end Almajiri practice in a couple of months by the special grace of God. That is the height of intolerance. That is the height of inhumanity to man. God bless you all.